What's good, people? It's your boy DJ Wade. I am now watching Alter Daily. Um, well, I went to school and I went to uni in Hull, and obviously it, it wasn't it wasn't hard back then because like me and one of my friends, Ibi, we were we were the only main DJs, so like we were basically like running things back then. So like getting bookings, everything was kind of easy. But then obviously moving back to Nigeria where you have to make a name for yourself and you know how it is like they'll give you the earliest slot you'll be playing for like 10 minutes you'll be playing for bartenders waiters when there's no one else there like it's just crazy and that happened for like a year in fact i wasn't even getting paid for like over a year and that was just how it was back then it was hard most places have decks already and there's like five DJs but when I was in Hull carrying my decks to like Birmingham to Essex by myself because I didn't have a manager that shit was sorry that was crazy like I'm I, my thing is like I think it's over like 40 kg so imagine me carrying that from my house to the train to the station back to the gig to the hotel and it was just madness but yeah um that period was I guess it was humbling because I had to like go through a lot of shit. It just, I guess it just it was just kind of humbling because like at the time I, I, I obviously thought that I was, <laughs> I thought I was very, very good. And then when I come back and people are like only giving me 10 minutes for like no one, then it's a humbling experience and then it just gets you through it, I guess. Funny enough, me and Ulu actually started DJing at the same time. Well, that's how like both of us got into it because like my brother was a DJ as well, so I think through that I I had this software or I downloaded this software from LimeWire like back in the day called uh, Virtual DJ and then me and Olu got it but then Olu ended up taking it more serious than I did because we were like in I think year, year, oh, year 9 or year 8 I'm not really sure but around that area sure. and then there was one party that Olu DJed in, in England, I was still in Nigeria at the time. I can't remember which one it was, but then, yeah, yeah in Apre. I know where it was, but I don't remember. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So everyone was telling me that you, Olu killed, Olu was, he couldn't stop talking about it. He was telling me like, yo, he shut it down. Everyone was telling me he shut it down. And that kind, cause me, I'm very competitive. So that just gave me fire to keep wanting to do it more. And then that's kind of when I started taking it serious. Well, not seriously, just doing it a bit more. And then when I went to uni was when I started taking it seriously. So that's like a couple years after that, maybe like two, three years after that. Let me tell you, today they still call me international DJ, even though I've lived here for like 15 years. But <laughs> so like, <laughs> international DJ, I mean, I don't get it, but like, it is what it is. Like, yeah, but like, I, I feel like, my generation was like the first generation that properly took DJing seriously because other than DJ Olu, rest in peace, there was no one else in our, even like older than him, apart from like maybe Obi. Yeah, only Obi actually. But now in our generation, there's so many people, even the younger, like even the younger DJs like Meke, TDR, all these kids that are running things right now. So like shout out to everyone, man. I mean, no one wants to be second best in anything they do. So I feel like naturally there is, but like, I don't think there's anything like, you know, the way like artists have beef, there's never like DJ beef because we all kind of understand what it took to get to where we are. So we all kind of look out for each other and love each other for that. Obviously, when I got my own, everyone from my mom, my dad, my uncles, my aunties were telling me to take it off. Now, both my brothers have it. My dad kind of has mini dreads as well <laughs> yeah my dad kind of has so it's just kind of crazy but like you know what it is what it is i'm a trendsetter <laughs> that's actually a good question i'm a bit indifferent to that because quite a few like well-known djs have told me not to get sucked into like the club dj scene or if i'm doing that i should do like six months in one club and then move to another club just to keep it fresh but i don't know how i feel about it actually personally i i like going to the club so if i'm going and the music isn't 
<laughs> is it like good i just feel like it's my duty to like do that so if i'm gonna be there why not play that's how i feel and i'm getting paid for it so uh plug shout out to plug my new family um it's literally my new management deal because i never had management before so now they're literally behind me helping me get like more into that that's why i asked for like more international bookings more bookings with like concerts and like just like and more like deals with like brands and like sponsorship and stuff like that shout out to plug kids stay in school and you're now listening to alter daily The Alternative Network.